Hey there, uh, just a quick video in response to a question that was asked in the comments about some details of, um, of sewing the canvas. And I frankly, I lack the attention span to go back through my videos and see if the question's been answered. So I'm just going to do it again. Uh, I'm using as my example here a kilt uh, for a fellow who's, um, he brought me the cloth and I got it to the point where I finished it to the point where I need him to come in for a fitting. And this is now my usual practice. Instead of just blasting away to the end and then have the person come in, I've reached a point where I want the person to come in so I can try it on them. Because if I was to progress any further past this stage, which I'm going to explain fully, and then I had to do a change, I'd have to undo work that I've done. And that annoys me. So what we see here in... Um, in the canvas is we have two pieces of canvas the front apron and the rest and I, I haven't bothered to take pictures of what a lousy job I've seen other people do sometimes it's a narrow strip of canvas maybe a couple inches wide you know two less than three fingers width running from buckle to buckle but that's not good enough because this these seams the fell seams they're not strong in tension and if and if people the kilt maker hasn't left a, much of a seam allowance even if he has if these seams are under tension because you're pulling your kilt tight there's a chance that the cloth is going to pull apart right that's why i do a wide piece and, and i developed this method basically in response to seeing many 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 failed kilts quite frankly that they they come apart and when these seams go there's really not much you can do except pull them apart sew them narrower if possible and then carry on so we have one piece of cloth that starts at the buttonhole and goes all the way to the end i've seen again i've seen narrow strips i've seen wide pieces like this where they've cut darts in it so that it'll make the, the radius and that's ridiculous that's cargo cult because they're they're going through the steps but because they don't understand the principles they've just wasted time um i've also seen people a lot of these using people using taylor's canvas which is unnecessary and unnecessary expense because this canvas taylor's canvas is there to form a shape to a garment this canvas is here to be strong in tension it's acting like a belt <clears throat> taylor's canvas sure it's strong in tension but it costs more than this stuff it doesn't do a better job Okay, so the center portion, as you can see, is herringbone stitches. I start up here in the left-hand corner on the left hip and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth all the way to the end. Now, this one is fairly straight because this fellow is, um, is quite an important figure and there's not a lot of... He doesn't really have a his hip to... Waist to hip, it really isn't a section of a cone. He's pretty much like that otherwise I'd be sewing and I, I'm pretty sure I have covered that elsewhere I'll look um, towards the inner apron now when it's finished the inner apron <clears throat> is going to be sewn the same way with with herringbone and incidentally the reason why the herringbone goes in this direction is it has a little bit of give this way along way along the stitch it really doesn't have much give across right so we do end to end if you do it this way you're doing it wrong so so and the other, and a new thing that i've started doing <clears throat> is instead of cutting the canvas just shy of the apron i'm now folding it back about the width of the fold over because it just gives a little more stiffening for when the strap is to help distribute the the tension from the strap now what we see here, I've basted it together with basting thread. I've basted this together as well. There's a couple of, of, um, a couple of uh, needles in there. Oh, sorry, pins in there, I should say. Because I'm waiting for this chap to come. And if, if this turns out to be right, then I'll sew it up. But you see this double piece of cloth. What I'm going to do when it's done is I'm going to cut along that line. I'm going to cut like that so when I'm sewing the lining in, I'm only sewing through a single piece of cloth and not a double piece of cloth. Now, at the other end, I've done the same thing, and I have done the video on how to how I attach a front apron. 
but how we lace, the, we try to overlap the two canvases even a little bit here and then lace them together. And I've basted that in place. Now I haven't sewn, what I have done is I've just basted it to the end, or sorry, to the end, of, to the length of the, the, the canvas. But I haven't done any more shaping <coughs> because when this fellow comes, I'm going to, as you can see, I have a buckle temporarily attached and a strap laced into it, is I'm gonna put the thing in them. I'm gonna mark where the end of the, the, of the strap sits when I, when I fit it to them, temporarily sew that strap in place and then do it up again. And then as he's wearing, as the kilt is being held in place on him by this one strap and buckle on the left hip, I'm gonna see how this hangs on his figure. I'm gonna see, because the, the apron, I still have to do that to form the apron. I haven't, even, I haven't even done that yet because when this is hanging off him, I wanna see what this cloth is doing, how the, how the pleats are gonna hang because if the pleats, if gravity is showing me the pleats are gonna hang differently, they're certainly gonna hang differently after I finish the kilt, right? So that gives me an idea of that. But that also that allows me, when the guy's wearing the kilt, I can see where this cloth is relative to the first seam here and the hang of this. I can then, with this piece of cloth, here, I'm gonna quickly do it like this. You can actually see, there's, the inner apron, we're going, to, we're going to pretend his body's actually in there. I'll bring the piece of cloth across. And incidentally, when this chap shows up, if he will agree to being my model, I'll do this video a second time with, so you can actually see it in real time with the body actually in place. But kilt in place, buckle on the left hip done up. I bring the cloth across and then I would see and I'm going to temporarily mark with, with clay chalk. And I would see, okay, that's the edge of the front apron at the waist. That's the end of the front apron at the hip. Then I would take it off them. And then with the tape measure, which I don't have in front of me, whoops, I would measure from the edge of this pleat, which is there and there, I would measure that distance. And that's going to tell me you know, the, the numbers are fine, but re here's reality showing me exactly how big that front apron is. So I take that measurement and I translate it, transpose it to center on the center line here. I do the same thing at the hip. And then we continue making up the, the front apron, but I do the same thing that I did on the inner apron. This cloth is a little bit long. It too will be folded over. It too will have that cutout like so so that when we're sewing the lining in, we're dealing with one layer of canvas. So I hope that answers the question. Again, uh, when this chap is able to come up and visit, I'll, I'll see if he'll agree and then I, can, then I can show it to you actually in practice. So thank you.